<clears throat> Welcome everyone. Today we'll talk about managing global teams. What is exactly the hindrance, possibilities, dimensions of managing a global team in this particular video. First and foremost, we need to understand what is a group. Remember, group is nothing but two or more interacting individuals who are dependent, mutually dependent upon each other to come to a common goal. We may have two kinds of groups, the formal group where the goal is stated, the informal group where the goal gets accumulated as with the process of time. It gets assimilated into the system. So group work groups are defined in an organization that have designated work assigned. So that's a formal group. Definitely the goal has been mentioned out here. But in an informal group, the goal merges out, emerges with the passage of time, with the requirement that the society feels so. And that is what informal groups are all about it. Examples of formal groups are command groups, group determined by, by the organization chart and composed of individuals who report directly to the given manager. Then we have something called task group, essentially brought into existence to complete a particular task. It might be technical, it might be nominal, it can be anything. But just for that task, the group forms a temporary position. People from various departments assimilates probably to accomplish a particular task. Cross-functional groups, groups that brings together knowledge and skills of individuals from various works of work groups whose members have been trained to do each other's job. Then we have the self-managed team, groups that are essentially dependent on each other's essentially independent mind you but in addition to their own tasks they take a traditional responsibility managerial responsibility let's say for hiring a marketing manager wants to have hire some marketing executive some business development manager he or she probably the marketing manager cannot depend on the human resource department to select the right candidate probably he or she the marketing manager has to proactively participate as to pick and choose the prospective employees so that the performance of the marketing department doesn't take a hit so yes we talk about command groups we talk about task groups, we talk about cross-functional group and self-managed teams Stages of de de group development, essentially five stages of which three are mentioned. The first three is forming, storming, norming, performing and adjoining the five stages. Let's talk about the forming stages is the first stage of group development. Probably we have assigned a formal group. In this case, every person has is assigned a role. <coughs> this is the forming stage. In, in case of an informal uh, group, members come together with the search of need to find solution to a common ground to a common problem so that is the forming forming stage in storming stage is the second stage where it has been developed with or should i say characterized by group conflict where people are trying to adjust to each other trying to accommodate each other's aspiration norming stage the third stage is essentially the stage where people get acclimatized to the group the characteristic of the group takes to form a takes to take up particularly a solid state of affairs. <laughs> Every person comes to know what, uh, what is his or her roles in the group, who is going to, going to contribute, what kind of expectation is uh, expected and participation thereof. So this is the third stage of norming. So we have forming, storming, norming, then comes performing and adjoining. Performing stage is where the group assimilates and unifies and delivers delivers its effectiveness, proves its worth. This is the fourth stage. Remember, be it functional, be it task, be it everything. This is the stage where they perform, they accomplish the task. Adjoining, after accomplishing of the task, if it is a task force, it gets disseminated, you know, it gets dissolved altogether. Similarly, in adjoining stage, the final stage of group development, where people part ways since the common objective was already achieved. So yes, we have this uh, stage one of forming. People are like a few radicals. Then they pick up a storming stages when people might get acclimatized with one another, expecting. Then comes the norming stage. Probably everybody are expecting to know what their roles are. Performing stage, everybody works in tandem so that they achieve the job. And at joining stage, people might leave just because of the fact that their, their objectives has been met. 
work group performances and satisfaction what why are some groups much much more successful than others it is because of the abilities of group members it is because of the size of the group it is because of the level of conflict the internal pressures on members to conform to the group norms and that is primarily the reason why certain groups outshine the work of other groups altogether because the members are much more agile the members are much more performance oriented the members are much more concentrated focused on the task at hand external condition imposed on the groups are basically the organization strategies the authority relationships formal rules formal regulation availability of resources employee selection criteria the performance management system and culture the general physical layout of the group workspace if it may be and this is what we are looking forward to it a group performance potential depends to a large extent on the resources each individual brings to the group this include knowledge skills abilities and yes essentially your personal personality traits so group member resources are your all your knowledge all your skills all your abilities plus the unique traits that you bring in the persona that you bring in the network the connection that you bring bring into the group that's the amount of wealth that the persons or the members of the group will be adhering to the resources group resources i'm talking about it so the structure of the groups everything gets defined with the passage of time the role what role is expected from each member of the group who is occupying what kind of work what kind of situation and what kind of problem would be solved by the gentleman or the lady in the group <clears throat> then we have the norms the standards the expectation from the group that are accepted and that are supposed to be adhered by a group member then we have something called group think when a group exert extensive pressure to an individual to align to his or probably her opinion with that of others this is what group think it's a peer pressure that gets built up let me talk about the structure first and foremost you get associated with the group because of a status the prestige the position if it's a formal group if it is an informal group you would like to be the seen in the group where it they have the largest mass where the impact makes a stupendous sound social loafing the tendency to of an individual to be expending less effort when working collectively then while working individually so if you are folk, if you are working in a group either your contribution is negligible or not even noticed or probably you can pass through but when you are working as an individual you have to be concentrated and the because the total objective depends on your effort you have to put in much more concerted efforts to achieve the objective you have to be very focused you have to put in labor you have to put in effort you have to make every minute count but that is something where you can do do away with in a group that is called social loafing group cohesiveness the degree to which a group members are attracted to one another one another to achieve the goals thereby we have this ash card which is wonderful you know this was an experiment that was given by this psychologist where in there is this particular card the, there is this particular card and people have been notified given another set of cards where people have been given with the lines of different shapes then they were asked which this card is ready with which line is this this line is this this line or is this that line a b or c now what has deliberately happened is people were made to there were some dummy candidates people were asked to state that uh, line number a matches x even though line number b matches x there were one two three concentrated responses given from the dummy candidate wherein they were saying that line number a was matching x and then the real candidate or the real sample of the population who came around it this responded actually stated yes a is equivalent to the same length as x is all about it despite the fact his knowledge was telling about b and this happened repeatedly quite a number of times barring a few wherein certain peer responded did point out that b was the exact line now what i'm trying what this psychologist acts would love to say it is people adhere to to the group think process people don't want to be seen separate they want to go along with the majority feeling per se so yes we are talking about group size small group makes faster decisions than large one 
small groups are much more effective large groups consistently get better result probably solving result than the smaller groups but let's see amazon founder and ceo jeff bezos uses two pizzas altogether technique that comes around it so that it a team should be small enough that it can be fed with two pizzas that is what um, Zeb Bezos' philosophy is all about it. The, he would love to have small group. It is up to you. Small groups make faster decisions than the larger group, but the larger group is much more effective in getting problems solved. Remember, that's what more important. Group processes, processes that go on within the group, that determines the performance of the group and overall satisfaction. This includes communication, decision making, conflict management. We name it and that is what the group process is all about it. Communication, decision making and conflict management. Most group use to make come to arrive to a decision. Now, why do we have an individual decision making and a vis-a-vis -a, -vis a group decision making? What are the advantages in individual decision making? The individual has the owners to take a decision and to implement it, which might not be the cases in terms of group. Group people are going to take a complete knowledge, complete information before arriving to the situation. Most importantly, a problem, a situation would be viewed from 360 degree angle, from every possible angle. And once decided upon a solution, the group would take lesser of an inertia in implementing the solution or executing the decision. Disadvantages, nevertheless, <clears throat> there are plentiful of disadvantages of group decision making. First and foremost thing, it becomes a lengthier process. A group decision takes longer time to reach to a conclusion. Most importantly, a particular section which may be dominant or vociferous might influence the group overall group decision what you come up with the axe card of group thing conflict management perceived incompatibility differences that result of interference or opposition traditional views of conflict this view that all conflict is bad everything must be avoided human relation view of conflict the view that conflict is absolutely as natural as possible and it is an inevitable outcome of any group so yes conflict is desirable yes conflict is unavoidable yes conflict is manageable <coughs> conflict management interactionist view of conflict yes if there are no conflict, either everything is going good or everything is going crossly wrong. So you should have some sort of conflict so that it works effectively. The functional conflict, conflict that supports a group goals, improves its performances. Dysfunctional conflict is a conflict that prevents a group from achieving its goals altogether. We are talking about the conflict management. There can be what kind of conflict? We have task conflict. We have relationship conflict. We have process conflict. People might not be adhering to any of these issues as in whose task is it what is the relationship that we are looking into what is the personality clashes that are going into how a work should be done this is what task conflict relationship conflict and process conflict is all about it remember the managing global teams you look into it the performance level that comes around here wherein the performance is measured on the y-axis and the passage of time would be going around the group formation situation level of conflict you look the level of conflict goes highs and the performance at the top level optimal functional variable self-critical high level that comes around it so yes conflict would be there yes performance would be there if there is some work there might be certain other viewpoints alternative viewpoints to do a work we should always take into a strike conflict management techniques there are five techniques as in such you see look the assertiveness on the y-axis and probably cooperations on the x-axis so when you are trying not to be as unassertive and uncooperative you're basically doing nothing but trying to avoid yourself but what happened when you are cooperating completely and not being a, a unassertive at all you are trying to accommodate the other fellow the conflict has been resolved. But what happened if there is no cooperation at all, with zero cooperation and very assertive, you are actually forcing, you are actually asking conflict to be done according to you. But then comes something which is you are optimally assertive and optimally cooperative. Is somewhere down the corner, you're working hand in gloves as in collaboration is done. Walking the mid path is compromising. Everybody wins sometimes or the other times. 
turning groups into effective teams. Group members work intensely on a specific common goals using their positive energies, individual, mutual accountability, and complementary skills. Everybody contributes, no matter what the quantum of their contribution is all about it. It is the contribution, it is the pat on each other's back which helps all together. Group versus team. Let's say the work team leadership role is shared. In a work group, only leaders change clearly are in, in charge. In a work team, accountability is to self, to the team. In work groups, it's according only to the self and not to the team. In work teams, team creates the specific purposes, objectives, accomplishment. In work group, purpose is the only same and remains more or less identical and broader for the organizational purpose. In work teams, work is done collectively, but in work groups, work is done individually. In work teams, meetings are characterized by open-ended discussion, collaboration, problem solving. In work groups, meetings characterized by efficiency, no collaboration or open-ended discussion. In work teams, performance is measured directly by evaluating and collective work outputs. Where in the work groups, we are talking about meeting characteristics by efficiency no collaboration or open-ended discussion work teams will performance is measured directly and evaluating the collective work output it's a team output it's not the individual output but in work groups it's an individual output that is looking into it measures according to the influence on others so this are the differences between groups and teams the types of work team there might be Plentiful of types. One which is all about problem solving. Now, what is problem solving is a firefighting mode. If there are any technical glitches, you know what to be done. It's a particular specialized team who is going to interact. If there is some sort of work, workers and management issues, problem, union problems, association problem, labor problem, it's a particular team of department who is going to handle the situation in a much particular fashion, ensure that there are no bad public relations Pub, uh, uh, public relation activities taking place. So media handling has to be done. Similarly, the self-managed work teams is a type of work team that operates without a manager. Everybody is aware of his or her duties and they are responsible for their work and ensuring that the work is completed in due course of time. Cross-functional teams is a work composed from individuals from various departmental, be it finance, be it operation, be it engineering, be it non-engineering, be it gardening, be it landscaping. Virtual teams is a type of work team that uses technology to link physically dispersed members in order to achieve common globe. Virtual teams, people are lo located geographically in different places, but they get the tasks done. Creative effective work team. Essentially, we need to have a stated clear goals in big, bold, black letters. Everybody should understand it should be written there in, in a layman's language. Relevant skills. Team members should have the requisite skills, be it technical, be it interpersonal. Mutual trust is something which you cannot avoid because if there are no trust, the team doesn't exist. There is no synergy in the team. So effective team should always trust each other. Unified commitment. Members are dedicated to the team goals as often as possible. We talk about communication. Good communication. We talk about fluent communication. We talk about continuous communication. Communication should be to and fro every now and then until and unless every meaning is dissected. There cannot be any gaps in communication. Negotiating skill member needs to be able to comfort and reconcile differences. Appropriate leadership. Leaders motivate a team to follow through a difficult situation. Internal and external support. Proper training. Incentives and resources is what we are looking forward. Internal support, external support. So these are the characteristics of effective team. Let me clearly clear goals, relevant skills, mutual trust, unified commitment, excellent communication, negotiation skills, appropriate leadership, internal support and external support. The group members, the, what are the challenges facing the group in as a global team? Managers need to understand the cultural differences, the cultural characteristics of a group and need to understand and assimilate them into the work culture of the organization. Everybody's ethics should be, uh, should be respected. Everybody should be felt included and inclusive. Group structures, issues include conformity, status, social loafing, and cohesiveness. 
we have the group process multicultural global team is better able to capitalize on the diversity of the ideas let us talk about the global team what are the drawbacks dislikes of a deep team member probably because of the background mistrust of a team member probably because of the communication stereotyping it's a pre from notion in your things in your mind communication problem probably the language might be issue the tone might be an issue stress and tension if any these are essential drawbacks what happens the most common drawback but there are benefits too for example you have greater diversity of ideas limited group thing diversity of ideas coming from every angle every perspective limited group thing why because nobody knows each other they are talking from a different perspective and they would like to confirm to their their knowledge their technical know how increase attention to understanding of other ideas other perspective other point of view and that should be encouraged all together understanding social network the pattern of informal connection among individuals within groups the importance of social social network relationship can help or hinder team effectiveness relationship in proves team goal attainment and increases member commitment to the team with this we would love to wind up the presentation thank you for watching this video till the end